Hello guys, my plan is to create a tool for creating open world game at any size in Go.GameNG. And the first step for that is to create a good train system. In this video, I'm going to talk about the algorithm behind the train mesh that I showed some demo about it in other videos. But please note, this algorithm that I will show you will change in future and I will add some other thing to it. At the end of this video, I will talk about what is my future plan for this. I wrote this train with C++ in GD extension, but if you don't know how to write C++ code, don't worry because I just explained the algorithm behind this. Also, in some point in this video, I'm going to say the reason why we should use definitely C++ and the power of the C++ to be able to create this. This video could be a little bit long, so grab a cup of coffee or tea and watch this video with patience. Very well. Train, especially big train in open world game are the biggest mesh in the game and there is no possible way to show all the train with the same level of detail in all points. Godot 4 has a LOD system which is going to change the level of detail of the meshes but it is absolutely not good for train. This LOD system in Godot is going to change the LOD level of all the mesh at once and it is not good for train. So we should create our own algorithm for LOD in train in Godot. A while ago, I just created a train system which I divided the train to different chunk sizes. Then I adjust the level of detail of each chunk based on the distance to the camera. And each chunk is like this. For example, this is LOD 0 and this is LOD 1. And the way that I connected these LODs was that I removed these vertices. So we will show that there is no gap when LOD is going to change. With this method, everything works for a small scale train. I did this because Godot automatically called the chunks which are not in a camera frustum. Basically, I don't want to render the train which is behind me. Okay, so now I solve one problem and then I create another problem. The problem here is the number of the mesh instances. Imagine if we have a large, large train like the train that I created in other video demo, 32 km by 32 km. In that case, we need 1 million mesh instances that Godot should handle. And there is no way that Godot can handle all of these mesh instances. So how we should solve this problem? Remember that I told you I divide the train so the train chunk outside of the camera frustum will be called. Let's look at the camera frustum again. Can you see that? The train chunk which are further away from the camera don't need to be small. So what if we merge those chunks further away from the camera? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing to do is to create a grid. This grid has some points in that. And each point in this grid can have a mesh or could be empty. There are multiple calculations which we should perform to understand that each point can have a mesh or not. Also, if that point has a mesh on that, which LOD is that mesh? And we should know if we should drop the vertices of the mesh or not. At last, also which size has that mesh? 32, 64, 128, and so on. So we should do a bunch of calculation to obtain this information. Okay, so let's go step by step. First, we should create a grid and points. At first, I thought I create an empty mesh instance at each point, then I attach a mesh to that. Also, I'm going to do that in a rendering server directly. So the way you normally add a mesh in Godot, you add a mesh instance 3D node in scene, and then you put a mesh inside that. The way that rendering server work is the same, just without adding node. And it is much faster. You just create an instance by calling instance create function in rendering server. Then rendering server return to you a 64-bit integer number in a format of read. This number represents the ID of your instance and whenever you want to make some changes to your mesh, for example, you can add a mesh to your instance by grabbing the mesh read and calling this function. Here base is the read of your mesh. I just put the link of the Godot doc page about rendering server so you can read that. It is not so hard. So my plan was to create at each point an instance and whenever I want, I will add the correct mesh to that. But after a short period of time, I understand this is not possible for large scale. 
Here in GD script, I write a small piece of code. I just create 1 million instance in rendering server and I save the read of them inside an array. Now if I run my game, if I go inside debugger, memory, take a look at the RAM memory usage. It is 735 megabyte. I don't know what Godot do internally, but it seems you should not create instance in a large scale. Also, if I remove this instance, the memory usage will not come back. It seems Godot will keep the memory pool that it had. So now imagine I create 2 million instances. This will take 1.38 gigabyte, which is no way acceptable. So this is where C++ shines. Because if it was not for C++, I could not reduce the amount of memory usage. Okay, so now in my grid, each of my points contains some information about its region which we need for our calculation. I try to keep each point minimal as possible because we have a lot of them. So this struct in C++ show the information of the each point. Anyway, if you are not familiar with C++, don't worry, just I want to tell you what information hold each point. Each point contain this information. Which instance read it has? If it does not have any instance, its read would have ID of zero which mesh read it has, which LOD it has, and also which size it has. Well, all of this information takes about 18 bytes. Now imagine if we want to create this in GD script. In GD script, each variant or variable can take up to 20 bytes. Here we need four information and that could take in GD script 80 bytes, which is a lot. Also, maybe in future, I will add more information inside this point struct. Anyway, now if we want to create 2 million of these, that will take around 36 megabytes. Next thing that I want to do is to loop through these points as fast as possible. And this is another place that C++ shines. In C++, you have a lot of control over memory. The way you create an object in GD script, you call new, is that right? This will go and search for a free memory somewhere in your RAM, and then it create your object on that place. But if you work in C++, you can occupy all the memory that you need at once. You need 1 million points. Okay, first calculate how much space you need for 1 points then multiply that to 1 million and just ask your operating system for that amount of memory. Then at that memory, create all the points beside each other. And this will help to loop through these points as fast as possible because all of these points are beside each other in memory. This amount of control over memory does not exist in GD script and because of this, it is really important. If you have a large amount of data somewhere in your game, you should definitely use C++. I have a GT extension course in my channel and definitely I should continue that as soon as possible. Well, now we have all of our points, what we should do now? Okay, first let me clear one important thing before going any further. Here I try to be consistent to the Godot coordinate system as much as possible. So my train start as 0, 0. This is the positive x direction and this is the positive z direction. This region is left, this region is right, here is top and here is bottom. Now we need a system to specify a region in our grid. For example, this is a region which its left is 2, its right is 4 and its top is 1 and its bottom is 3. So first I thought to use rect2i class which exists in Godot for a specifying region but after that I understand that I need something more specific so I wrote another struct which is called mbound and this holds the information about the region of our interest. Well now we have all of the basic stuff that we need and now time to start calculation. And please note from this point all of this calculation is done in a separate CPU thread. Each train calculation loop starts with setting the camera position. So where is the camera and which region should have more density of vertices? After we insert the camera position, here you can see we immediately convert camera position from word position into our grid position. This is exactly the same as tile map, grid position and word position. 
here also we keep the original camera position because we need that also at some point well well after that we create our region of interest around the camera okay done now imagine this is the second train update loop and before that we had another region which is different for example this is our previous region what we do now is to check all the points in previous region and if they are not in the current region we want to remove their instance if they have so the first step is done now we loop through this region and we do all the calculation inside this first thing to do is to determine the LOD level of each cell and there is a really important thing that we should consider when we determine LOD level I just mentioned that in other video I also mentioned that here because we drop the edge vertices of each chunk when the LOD level change for example we cannot go from LOD 0 to LOD 2 we should go from LOD 0 to LOD 1 and so on this is a really important thing that we should consider when we calculate LOD level well first I grab the closest point to camera after that I calculate the LOD level for that point okay then we grow that region we take a sample point on that growth area and we calculate the LOD level for that then we check if that LOD level has the condition which I mentioned then we set the LOD level of all points in that growth area to that we repeat this process until we reach the boundary that we defined okay well done first step is done now we have the LOD for each point, is that right? Please note, still we did not create any mesh instance. Next step is to merge all chunk which we can. We start from top left corner point on our grid. First we check which LOD is that. For example, this is LOD4. Now we check which size available for this LOD4. For example, the biggest size available for this LOD is 128. Okay, now we start with the biggest size and we create a region for that. There are some conditions that should be exist here to this chunk size be accepted. First condition is all point which is under this region should have the same LOD. In this case, LOD4. Here this is not acceptable. As you can see, a part of this area has a different LOD level. So we check the next smaller size available for LOD4 and that is 64. Well, this one is okay and it passed the first condition. Second condition is this. All edges of this area, left, right, top, bottom, should have the same LOD level. That LOD level could be 3 or 4. And it doesn't matter which one. It should just be the same. For example, this is not acceptable because the part of the right edge has LOD level 4 and part of it has LOD 3. Well, what happened after one of these sizes has been accepted? After one of these sizes has been accepted, we check the edge of that. For example, for this one, we should drop the right vertices to be consistent to the right LOD level. So now we know that this point should have this mesh. But what about other points in this region? Well, other points should be empty and because of that, we set the size of them to minus one. And in case one of these points has an instance from previous train update, we should delete that. And for the first point in top left corner, we create the instance for that. Also, we attach the correct mesh to that. But we hide that. So you might ask why we should hide that. I will tell you in a moment. We hide that because we are doing all of this stuff in a different CPU thread. Maybe we add this mesh in one frame and another mesh in another frame. So what will happen is that the player will see that the train chunks are destroying and creating, which is not good. So we do all the heavy work in this CPU thread and then after finishing the work, we update all of the meshes in just one frame. Now we just add this instance to a list so we know which instance should be on height. Also, if an instance should be deleted, we add that to another list which contain all of the instances that should be deleted. Now we're continuing to looping in our points. Next point size is minus one. So we already know that it has been merged. So we pass that and we set all of the meshes in this way. So this was the general way of creating train. And there are a lot of small things that I did not cover in this video. Of course, this algorithm still can be improved also a lot of other things should be added to this 
like collision. Now, despite we can generate infinite amount of the train mesh, we still have another limitation. You know, after we create this mesh, we should change the height of each vertex by a height map texture. But unfortunately, there is a limitation for the maximum height map texture resolution, which we can import. Android devices are limited to 4K textures, and PC is limited to 16K images. So how we can create an infinite world? Well, we can divide the height map texture to smaller pieces. Also divide our grid to different region and for each region load a proper height map as player get close to that region. I am still working on this and I will publish a demo as this get ready. I hope you like this video and till the next video, bye.